Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Otto Valin has scored the biggest win of his career, getting a split decision win in Turkey over Murat Gassiev. So this is huge for Valin and his career because he's been sitting, waiting and watching, hoping for an opportunity. And this was an all on the line sort of fight and it's paid dividends. But for Gassiev, you have to ask what next, given, you know, he had some struggles getting fights recently. So too with Valin. But this is a huge win for Otto Valin, who was workmanlike in this fight. He managed to disrupt the rhythm of Murat Gassiev, who was the come forward pressure fighter. Early on in those first six rounds, Otto Valin, pretty simple strategy, box and move, throwing that jab out there, pretty tippy tap stuff a lot of the time, but he was banking rounds on the back of activity. What you had from Gassiev was he was coming forward, not cutting off the ring well, certainly had it, hadn't learned his lesson from the Alexander Usyk fight about cutting off the ring. And he was trying to land a lot of shots to the body and obviously to the head as well. Limited success, but he did have, you know, it was kind of one of those fights where it's kind of what you liked in some of the rounds was it the two or three you know more eye-catching notable shots that Gassiev would land versus the sort of tippy tap jabs from Otto Valin which were more pesky and disruptive and then occasionally there'd be a right hook and also a left hand you know counter coming in but he was able to I think after the first uh, six or seven rounds I had Otto Valin up quite a bit and I was thinking this is the period where Gassiev needs to step it up and while he tried to do that late and had some degree and measure of success, he really wasn't doing enough. He had Valin numerous times bailed on the ropes or in the you know the corner, and he just couldn't let his hands go. Otto Valin would you know either cover up or just end up uh, throwing something back and circling out, staying out of harm's way. And I think it raises a question about Murat Gassiev's gas tank because we saw Otto Valin through the weight of some of the punches from Gassiev starting to tire late, but Gassiev not being able to really take advantage. I sort of expected this one to sort of play out mostly how it did, that Valin would box well early, he would pick up rounds and Gassiev would come on a bit stronger in the second half of the fight. And I think largely that's what we saw. I think it was rounds uh, eight, uh, 10 and 11 where Gassiev started to land a lot more notable shots as Ga uh, as Valin sh uh, slowed and became a much more hittable target. He was able to cut him off, land some shots, body and head. But even in those rounds where he probably won them, just not enough work, not enough activity. Valin had banked enough rounds and actually round 12 he had landed some decent shots. But then um, the website that I was watching, the, the actual stream cut off. So yeah, this was a Russian TV website that was carrying the fight and it just stopped. So I don't know what happened in the last minute and a half of the fight, but I had Valin up by a round and arguably, you know, depending if I switched around, around, uh, around, around, it could have been um, uh, two rounds up. So because it was one of these hard to score fights. What did you like? Did you like the sort of more volume of shots by, by Valin, which was, you know, arguably not a lot on them for the most part, or the sort of more eye-catching work, but less frequent landing shots from Gassiev, but he was the come forward fighter. Although Otto Valin, clearly the strategy, box and move, box and move, stay out of the way of the right hand. He was um, dictating how this fight played out for large stretches of it. There was actually one notable, um, in, uh, instance in the fight, round six in particular, Valin, who generally cannot knock the skin off a of rice pudding, he actually connected with the right hook and it was almost like there was a delayed reaction from Gassiev, but then he sort of just dipped just a little bit and it was almost like the punch had either, you know, hurt his cheekbone, jaw or um, maybe eye socket or something like that because orbital bone because he looked like you know he was uh, you know something had happened there and he didn't like it and his body was reacting i thought it was maybe some sort of injury that he picked up through that punch because then, then he started backpedaling for about the next 15 or 20 seconds before he regathered himself and ultimately he finished that round relatively strongly landed a decent left hook but definitely an otto valine round so i think and i even said on twitter a few rounds um, about round eight 
given some of the way that this is playing out, it was largely, apart from a few rounds, largely the same sort of, you know, tenor to the fight. How were people going to be scoring this? Were they going to be rewarding Varlene with his activity with the jab, an occasional right hook, occasional left hand counter, that sort of thing? Or were they going to be rewarding Gassier for the bigger shots? So I could have seen, you know, a lot, the scorecards being a little bit all over the place. But I do think that Judge with, um, 117 111 to Gassiev I think that's a bit too wide because he wasn't really doing enough and I think he needed to be throwing more punches especially in the second half of the fight but I think he just didn't have the energy he was conserving himself you know he would have Valine up on the ropes and you know throw one shot two shot um, and just sort of be standing there in front of him not doing much allow Valine to circle out so I Murat Gassiev's only got himself to blame and maybe it was the engine that let him down on this one and given he's been so inactive we didn't know what we were going to see but also I guess the question is did the power really sort of uh, translate this is probably the first fight with Gassiev at heavyweight where we get a proper assessment and I think we've seen with Otto Varlene through the likes of he's fought Tyson Fury fought Dominic Brazil taken a few shots you know he's got a decent chin he can take a shot but Gassiev, you know, he did seem to maybe sort of stun or buzz him on a couple of occasions, but he didn't really sort of seem to rock him to the point where you're like, he's almost out of here. You know, obviously I didn't see the last minute and a half of the fight, so I have no idea what happened there. Maybe maybe something happened. But I do think that, um, yeah, the power didn't carry up or uh, have the sort of impact that I think many of us were expecting. And Varlene was just, you know, it was a simple strategy. Box and move, stay out of harm's way, constantly pump out that jab break, disrupt the rhythm just keep it in his face you know just pushing it out there there wasn't a lot on some of these jabs that were landing but it was just enough to sort of throw Gassiev off what he wanted to do a lot of the time so what now so there was I believe uh, a WBA international strap on the line something from the IBF you know these small um, you know regional belts you know we'll see this will probably propel Varlene up the rankings a bit but hopefully it leads to something bigger and better because he needed this win. You know, look, it's been a, a pretty long time between drinks, between meaningful wins. Valin, I don't think as of late, has been promoted that well. He hasn't had many meaningful fights. Uh, the problem is when you sit there and demand the big fights and don't fight anyone in the meantime, you know, you sort of create a situation for yourself where, you know, you don't have any recent form to also justify that. He's got that now. So this will be helpful to his career. I think if he faces, because I, I mean, ahead of this fight, I mean, I was saying that I think these two top, uh, these guys are sort of around the top 20, Gassiev and Varlene. I can't really have them any higher because they haven't been doing anything of late. I think this one sort of propels um, Varlene up the list a little bit. I know some people have him in their top 10. I don't. But this is a results-based um, division. You know, if he continues to win, continues to put on good performances and get the wins. I mean, this might not have been super pretty and this may not have um, satisfied, uh, satisfied everyone in, in terms of the entertainment front because obviously some people say this was a negative strategy. But what did you expect? This is Otto Varlin. This is his bread and butter. This is what he does. And again, though, he did tire in this one. Uh, he was certainly from about round 10 onwards. The feet were starting to, you know, it wasn't, the movement wasn't as crisp. Gassiev was able to cut off the ring a little bit better. He was a bit more stationary and static. You know, he was able to uh, to be hit a bit more. But he'd banked enough rounds and he, he obviously backed himself and was able to get through to get the win here. So I do hope that he can get something meaningful because obviously, we, you know, all of us, we want to see these guys in meaningful fights. I mean, I don't want to see him facing more Kamil Sokolowski types. You know, there's been three or four years where there's been not much of anything since the Brazil fight. Uh, obviously, in the Tyson Fury fight was well, all the way back in 2019. You can't dine off that forever. you got to make your name on the guys that you're fighting now to justify getting those big fights. Beating Gassiev, who some people may say, look, he wasn't fully bona fide at uh, um, heavyweight, being from Cruiserweight, and certainly the size differential in there, um, Valin was able to utilize not only his athleticism through the, the box, he was able to manage the range, especially early on, you know, and try to keep Gassiev at bay through the extra length that he had. So he did his job, he did it well, he got the decision. Uh, what next for Gassiev? Unclear. Uh, what next for Valin? Well, hopefully not another year of nothing. Anyway, what'd you make of the fight? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.